It's happening. After months of leaks, whispers, and teaser images that had the entire photography world losing sleep, Sony is finally about to drop the A7 V. December 2nd. Mark that date. But here's the thing nobody's talking about yet. This camera records 4K 120p with a crop. It's got a brand new 33 megapixel partially stacked sensor. And it's coming in at around $3,000. Is it worth it? Can it actually compete with Canon's brand new R6 Mark III that just dropped with 7K video? Stick around till the end. Because what I'm about to reveal might completely change which camera you should buy in 2025. Let's talk about what's actually inside this thing. For years, the Sony A7 series has been the go-to workhorse for hybrid shooters. Wedding photographers, content creators, documentary filmmakers, everyone had an A7 IV in their bag. It was reliable. It was capable. But honestly, it was starting to feel dated. Well, Sony heard you. The A7 V coming on December 2nd will feature a brand new 33 megapixel partially stacked sensor. Now, if you're wondering what partially stacked means, think of it like this. A fully stacked sensor is like having a sports car with a supercharger. A partially stacked sensor is like getting the turbo upgrade without the full price tag. This is actually the world's highest resolution 33 megapixel partially stacked sensor. The Nikon Z6 III and Panasonic Lumix S12 both use a Sony-made 24 megapixel partially stacked sensor. But Sony is now the first to offer a higher resolution version of this technology. What does this mean for you? Faster readout speeds, less rolling shutter, cleaner images when you're tracking fast moving subjects. But wait, here's where it gets really interesting. The A7 V shoots 30 frames per second in 14 bit RAW using the electronic shutter and 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. That's a massive jump. The A7 IV could only do 10 frames per second maximum. And they've added something photographers have been begging for, pre-capture mode. You know those moments when a bird takes flight just a split second before you press the shutter? Pre-capture records the frames before you fully press the button. For wildlife shooters, this is huge. Eight stops of in-body image stabilization. For context, the A7 IV had 5.5 stops. That's nearly three extra stops of handheld stability. You could literally shoot at half a second shutter speed and still get sharp images. That's insane. Now let's talk about the thing that could make or break this camera for action shooters, the autofocus. The A75 gets the same AI chip as the Sony A12. This is the dedicated deep learning processor that Sony first introduced in the A7R5, and it's a complete game changer. Here's why this matters. The A7 IV used 759 phase detection points, which was already excellent, but it didn't have the dedicated AI processing unit. This AI chip enhances autofocus with advanced subject recognition and tracking, similar to the AI-driven systems in the A7 R5 and A12. So what can it actually detect? Based on what we know from A7 R5, and A12, which share the same AI architecture we're talking about. The AI allows the camera to not only more accurately detect the face, eyes, and body of human subjects, it also provides the power needed to perform similar autofocus detection and tracking on non-human subjects. The AI processing unit assists the focus system through intelligent algorithms to predict body poses and track not only the eye, but also the head and body. Think about what this means. You're shooting a portrait, your subject turns their head away from camera. The old system would lose them. According to Sony, cameras with this AI chip improve focus tracking of humans by 60% and animal slash birds by 40% compared to the A7 IV. More animals are detected too, including insects, which the A7 IV couldn't do. The camera can also track cars, trains, and airplanes. And here's the kicker. Real-time IAF is fully supported during video recording for subject detection and tracking of human, animal, and bird eyes while shooting. For wedding videographers, event shooters, this is the stuff that lets you focus on composition while the camera handles the technical heavy lifting. Now let's talk video, because this is where things get a little complicated. The A7 V records 4K 60p with no crop. 
full frame, oversampled 4K. This is actually a step up from Sony's own FX2, which has a crop at 4K60. And today, we just got confirmation that the A75 also records 4K 120p, but with a crop. We don't know exactly how big that crop is yet. The Sony A12 has a negligible 1.1x crop at 4K 120, so hopefully the A75 is similar. Here's the catch though, no open gate recording. For those who don't know, open gate lets you use the full sensor area to record video, giving you extra room to crop and reframe and post. Canon has it. Sony doesn't. At least not on the A7 V. The camera uses the same body design as the A7 R5, which means you get that free angle tilting 3.2 inch touchscreen. Vloggers, this one's for you. One SD slot and one hybrid SD slash Express Type A slot. Now, some people were hoping for dual Express slots, but remember, this is the mid-range A7 series, not the flagship A1. Dual USB-C ports, and they've finally gotten rid of the micro USB port. About time, Sony. All right, now for the million dollar question. How does the Sony A7 V stack up against Canon's freshly announced R6 Mark III? Because here's the thing, Canon didn't hold back. The Canon R6 III packs a 32.5 megapixel full frame sensor essentially the same resolution as the A7 V, and it can shoot 7K at 59.94p in Canon RAW light. Let me say that again. 7K, internal, RAW. Let's break this down spec by spec. Sony A7 V, 33 MP partially stacked. Canon R6 III, 32.5 MP non-stacked. Pretty much a tie. But that partially stacked sensor gives Sony an edge in readout speed and rolling shutter. Burst speed. Canon shoots up to 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter, plus 20 frames of pre-continuous shooting. Sony? 30 frames per second electronic with pre-capture. Canon wins here, but honestly, 30 frames per second is still plenty for most shooters. Video. This is where it gets spicy. Canon offers internally recorded 7K video at up to 60 frames per second in 12-bit raw light, plus open gate recording at 7K 30p. Sony? 4K 60 uncropped, 4K 120 with a crop, no open gate. For pure video specs? Canon takes it, no question. Canon's R6 III uses dual pixel CMOS AF with broad coverage. Canon sights AF down to EV minus 6.5 for stills, up to 6,097 user selectable points, and as many as 1,053 auto selection zones. Canon says the autofocus algorithms have been updated to match the ones on cameras like the EOS R1 and EOS R5 II, making it even more reliable. The R6 III gains the register people priority feature where you can train it to recognize a specific person and principally focus on tracking them over other people in the scene. What can Canon detect? Subject recognition for people, animals, and vehicles, as well as an auto mode that searches for those within the scene. Sony with its AI chip, humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, aircraft, and with that body pose estimation that keeps tracking even when subjects turn away. Here's the honest truth. Sony and Canon trade off AF capabilities, with some subjects more accurately tracked on each system. Animal eye detection and tracking are still better on some Sony cameras. Sony's system has a better implementation of displaying the focus points, keeping the focus indicator firmly on the eye of a moving person or animal. But Canon's new AF algorithms improve detection and stickiness, though the improvements over the Mark II are noticeable, if not major. Stabilization. Canon claims up to 8.5 stops at the center, 7.5 stops at the periphery. Sony claims 8 stops. Slight edge to Canon, but both are exceptional. Price. Canon R6 III comes in at $2,799. Sony A7 V is expected around $2,999 to $3,000. Canon is actually $200 cheaper. Surprising, right? If you're purely a videographer, especially if you're doing cinema work, short films, or high-end commercial content, 
The Canon R6 III with its 7K raw light recording, full-size HDMI port, and 8.5 stops of stabilization is genuinely hard to beat at this price point. But, and this is a big, but video specs aren't everything. For photographers who shoot fast action, sports, wildlife, events, Sony's dedicated AI processing unit, and that body pose estimation could be the difference between a keeper and a near miss. The AI algorithm predicts body poses and tracks not only the eye, but also the head and body, meaning when your subject turns away, Sony keeps tracking. Canon's system is excellent, but it doesn't have that same dedicated AI chip architecture. Sony believes that superior EVF, autofocus, image quality, and overall lens availability will make the A7 V a hot seller. And they might be right. The Sony E-mount ecosystem is absolutely massive. Third-party manufacturers like Sigma, Tamron, and Viltrox have flooded the market with incredible lenses at every price point. It seems like there's a new lens that comes out for the Sony mount from one manufacturer or another every week or so. Canon's RF mount? Still more restricted. More expensive. Fewer options from third parties. So here's my take. At around $3,000 the Sony a7 V is positioned perfectly for photographers who want flagship-level AI autofocus, excellent stills, and reliable 4K video without breaking the bank. The Sony a7 series has consistently set benchmarks in the mirrorless camera industry. From the original a7 to the current a7 IV, each generation has introduced meaningful improvements in sensor technology, autofocus, and video capabilities. The A7 V continues that legacy, even if it doesn't quite match Canon's video prowess. Announcement is December 2nd. Limited batch ships before Christmas. If you're in a market for a new hybrid camera, this holiday season is going to be very, very interesting. Drop a comment below. Team Sony or Team Canon? And if you're a wildlife shooter, I want to know, is that AI autofocus worth the extra $200 over the Canon? Smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my full hands-on review when these cameras actually ship. See you in the next one.